You know, people often say to me, you're a scrap metal synthetic human with a high voltage CRT monitor for a head. No, you cannot come in the hot tub with us. This is often immediately followed with, what's your opinion on video game movies? Well, let's watch one. So this movie opens with a uh, advertisement for some kind of anti-zombie drug that just screams, remember this, it will be important later. Right after that, we cut to generically handsome guy number 348. Uh, I swear they have like a million of this exact guy in a lab in Tampa somewhere. Anyway, he's fighting off some zombies in an alley, and right away I'm confused, because, well, the clown zombie laughs at him, and I'm like, okay, so they retain some amount of humanity. But then the zombies at the gate are just yelling and slamming on the gate, so no, they're just dumb monsters. But then the clown is holding an axe that he actually seems to know how to use, and the police zombie pulls out his gun and starts shooting, so they do retain cognitive brain function? But then when the guy gets the gun from the police zombie, it just goes all feral and tries to eat him, barely noticing he's wrestling the gun towards his head, so it's a dumb monster. But then the clown zombie shows a fear response when he points the gun at it, so higher brain functions. But then the zombies at the gate can't figure out that the only thing holding them back is a screwdriver wedged into the gate. So... dumb. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and assume that none of the zombies in this scene are actually pretending to be half-brain-dead shambling corpses, and they just had the writing staff pull double duty. Anyway, we flash back to our hero, Chase. That's his name. Get it? Because... because zombies chase you? Chase? Why do we exist to suffer? Anyway, Chase is reporting on the zombie outbreak from a local quarantine camp with his camera woman person pal. And okay, I swear these people were created by a computer with the words generically attractive logged into some sort of 3D printing algorithm. So they're reporting on the recent zombie outbreak and Chase tries to interview generic female action protagonist number 788, but she's just too sassy for him. So he decides to go check out the tent where they're administering the anti-zombie drug. <laughs> It, uh, doesn't go super well. Nurse! Look, man, this is the American healthcare system. She's busy. You're gonna have to sort it out yourself. So Chase and, um, uh, I'm gonna call her Sprinkles. Is everyone okay with that? Uh, Chase and Sprinkles escape, picking up another survivor along the way. Uh, they all end up holed up in a little pawn shop, and we get to learn just what kind of movie this is. You know, instead of just standing around, you should be looking for a weapon. A weapon? What, what weapons? This place is full of junk. <laughs> I need to hold your hand for everything. Make one. Yeah, most of the humor in this film is he says something dumb, she rolls her eyes and says something dismissive, hold for applause. So as it turns out, the government is just straight up blowing people away when they approach the quarantine fence because they say the new strain of the virus is airborne and can't be cured, but we end up seeing that Sprinkles is infected and she administers the anti-zombie drug to herself and it works. So, aha, intrigue. We also cut back and forth from our heroes to this newsroom where they're interviewing Frank West, who's some sort of veteran survivor? I'm gonna go out on a limb and assume he's the protagonist of the game. And I'm only assuming this because of how often they mention him and how much they try to sell him to us. Yeah, see, I, I never played the games, so this guy doesn't mean anything to me. And if the games are this boring, I'm kind of glad I haven't. But this is what interests me here, because they keep mentioning this guy and trying to upsell him, but he just seems like, you know, like a dude. And I feel like this is going to annoy fans of the game, because they're watching the guy that they actually like just sit at this desk and talk the entire movie. I mean, you literally do not see him do anything else other than sit at this desk and talk. And people like me who didn't play the games are going to be wondering what's so great about this guy when all he does is sit at a desk and talk. Uh, and, 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 and anyway, the army shows up, led by the Allstate guy, and he reveals that they've been giving orders to firebomb the entire quarantine zone, and I find myself hoping they just kind of do it so the movie will stop, but uh, no such luck. So it turns out the survivors have 48 hours before the area is bombed, but Sprinkles also only has one more day's worth of the anti-zombie treatment left, so we have our ticking clock. Unfortunately, they don't have much time to come up with a plan because the obligatory Mad Max murder gang shows up to ruin the great time they were having standing in a circle looking serious. So Macklemore here somehow picks the one building they're hanging out in because I guess he's got some kind of GPS for very serious people and things get tense as he starts to close in on them. But not to worry, Sprinkles pulls a gun on Macklemore and scares him away, and when he finally leaves, she reveals the gun is empty, but, uh, but he's barely out of the room. I'm pretty sure I can still see his shadow on the back wall over there. I'm not sure how he didn't hear her click the barrel like that. Uh, anyway, eventually Macklemore and friends get distracted chasing some woman who decided to keep her heels on during a zombie apocalypse. And, uh, she gets eaten. 
And yeah, yeah, that's kind of that. That's it. This scene served absolutely no purpose. None. Cut back to the interview with Frank, and the newscaster is asking him for some zombie survival tips, which I could be wrong, but I really do feel like, uh, I feel like she's asked him a couple of times already for these. Anyway, he again says build some weapons, I guess because improvised weapons were part of the game? I think I remember seeing that in an ad for it at some point. So they make their escape, and Chase uses his improvised weapons to kill some zombies, and I think Cole McGrath from Infamous. Now that was a good game. I'm gonna have to remember to talk about that. Unfortunately, Chase accidentally gets in the wrong vehicle trying to run away from the zombies and catch up with the two women, but he manages to escape because these are the most polite zombies in existence. They all just sort of brush his feet like they're in the front row at a pop concert, and this leads us to where we came in with him fighting the clown and the cop in an alley. Sprinkles and the other lady save him from the clown, and we cut back to photographer person and the Allstate guy having it out in one of the military tents. I think. I got distracted by a bug during this scene, so I don't really remember what happened. Anyway, with the help of one of the army guys, photography lady manages to track down some anti-zombie drug for Sprinkles, and they go check the place out. Uh, uh, Sprinkles and Chase go check the place out, not photography lady. I, I, I could have phrased that better. Anyway, all the find is the bad stuff, and Chase is like, Yo, Sprinkles, why don't you shoot up? If you turn into a zombie, we know it's bad. Brilliant idea, Copernicus. Why didn't I think of that? Meanwhile, Mom Lady stumbles across a room filled with zombie kids all chained to the floor, and she just kind of lets herself get eaten, so... So that's that, I... I guess. Not so much a character arc as a character line graph. Anyway, Sprinkles agrees to shoot the bad anti-zombie drug for some reason, and she starts to turn, so Chase shoots her up with the good stuff, and ta-da! All better. Also, this is the scene where I learned her name was Crystal. I was really close with Sprinkles. Fortunately, the zombies continue to be extremely polite and wait for all this to be over before chasing them out of the room. Sprinkles gets bit... again, and they end up stuck in a balcony with more zombies below them. And that's the end. They die there. Ta-da! No, no, I'm kidding. We still have 45 minutes left. Sprinkles gives us her tragic backstory about how she got bit, and we get some of Chase's story as well, but neither of them interest me, so I'm just gonna move on. They also upload the video of the bad anti-zombie drugs to, uh, uh to the internet, I, I guess, and it goes viral somehow. You know, it always looks so easy in the movies. After that, Chase just decides, eh, that's mission accomplished. Time to just sit here and wait to die. So he says his goodbyes to photographer lady and, uh, Jordan. Her name's Jordan. But just then, Macklemore shows up. What a coincidence. And, uh, that's it. They just show up, and we spend some time being re-shown the video footage of the bad drugs as it's watched by other people. Allstate guy drops Jordan a hint about sending in an unsanctioned combat team to rescue the survivors, and we cut back to Chase and Sprinkles. Chase is knocked out and tied to a forklift surrounded by zombies, and Sprinkles is captured by the Mac Pack. And, uh, is that the bad guy from Despicable Me? What is happening here? Anyway, Jordan and the Allstate guy basically blackmail the weaselly government guy into reinitiating an evacuation rather than just straight killing everybody inside. Well, he says they sent a team to the warehouse that Chase and Sprinkles were being held at, but it turns out he was lying and they plan on killing them anyway. Jordan tells Chase he and Sprinkles should get to the wall, but not tell anyone who they are when they get there so that they'll let them out. But, um, I, I don't know if the writers of this movie are aware of this, but Sprinkles and Chase are both, like, hugely famous right now. Everyone knows who they are. So Sprinkles gets Macklemore to do a villain monologue where he arms what appears to be, uh, what, four or five pounds of Semtex, and apparently his plan is to blow up the quarantine wall so the zombies can get out and he can rule the world or some sh**. So Sprinkles bites his ear off, which means he's infected now, but she gets caught again right as Chase leads a horde of zombies into the warehouse and tries to fight Macklemore. I like how every time someone makes an improvised weapon in this movie, it lasts like 11 seconds before it breaks. Which, I guess, is fairly realistic. Anyway, Sprinkles saves him from Macklemore, and they make their escape. Meanwhile, Allstate Guy reveals there's a new microchip that can provide a year's worth of doses of the anti-zombie drug, and they're just gonna start sticking them in people all willy-nilly. That's right, twist bad guy. At least it would be a twist if the camera didn't focus on the mysterious medical cooler behind him in the very first scene he's in. Anyway, yeah, this is supposed to be a big ta-da moment, so I guess I'll just let him have this one. So suddenly this movie becomes sort of a suspense thriller where the government wants to use the outbreak and pandemic as a way to enforce these mandatory medical treatments that allow them to implant microchips in the general populace to allow for greater surveillance. Oh boy, there are so many ways I could take this bit, but, um... No, I don't think I will. Anyway, Chase and Sprinkles make it to the wall, but then Macklemore shows up and starts launching tear gas canisters at it, and, um... 
Where did he get that? Did, did someone just have a f***ing grenade launcher in their yard? Also, they've been teasing this lawnmower blade shield that Sprinkles made for, like, the entire movie. Like, they kept finding excuses to get it in shots and zoom in on it and stuff, and it's only just coming into play now, and honestly, I could not be more underwhelmed. I mean, not that it would work anyway, since, uh... Since there's no gas tank for the motor, and the drive shaft would have to be resting on your arm, and even if it wasn't, that would get pretty hot. You'd probably end up with at least second degree burns, but f*** it, I've suspended my disbelief this far. Sprinkles and Chase get in a fight with Macklemore, and heh, look, rubber weapons. Eventually, Chase manages to caper toss an axe with the bomb from earlier attached to it into Macklemore's back, and the bomb explodes in, again, the most underwhelming way possible. It looks like they just set off some fireworks behind him and then stopped the camera and started again with him out of the way. But Chase and Sprinkles escape. Sprinkles and her somehow still immaculate eyeshadow gets a microchip, and we see the army pull up a bunch of names and locations of the chip people on a GPS while Chase goes off to look for Jordan, who's been black bagged by the government by now. We, uh. We don't get a conclusion for this storyline. We just get Sprinkles and Chase watching a video of Jordan getting kidnapped by heavily armed government agents and then staring triumphantly off into the distance while generic early 2000s grunge pop plays over footage of fighter jets bombing the quarantine zone. For all we know, they threw Jordan back in there before they blew it up. That's my personal canon ending, by the way. So, uh, yeah, that's the Dead Rising movie. I kind of liked it. I mean, it wasn't good, it was ridiculous, stupid, cliche, it took itself weirdly seriously other than the scenes with Frank West, but uh, it was fun. I mean, I don't think I would really recommend it, because if you stop to think about any of the scenes for more than five seconds, you're going to give yourself an aneurysm, but uh, I, I didn't hate it. It's the kind of movie you put on when you have a few friends over, you're a few drinks in, and you're not sure what else to do. I guess if you're in the mood for some terrible CGI blood effects, awful writing, ridiculous action, and lots of build-up with no payoff, this might be the movie for you. Quick aside before you go, I have a bit of a favor to ask. If you like my videos, uh, do me a favor and, um, well, like the video. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already and, and leave a comment. Even if you don't want to do any of those things, just hitting the share button and texting the link to yourself can help the channel. The only reason I ask is because I've actually noticed that some of my views have gone down on a few of my videos, and I'm pretty sure that's not the direction they're supposed to go go. I've also had people tell me they've been unsubscribed automatically, and with a channel this small, I consider a video a success if it gets more than 15 views in a week, so even a single viewer subscriber is a decent dent. Anyway, I'm done begging. Thanks in advance. I hope you enjoyed the show, and I'll see you next week. Thanks for stopping by.